right. What I'd like to do is show you guys how to simplify um, complex numbers. First thing, when um, when you're looking at complex numbers, what we have to imagine, not imagine, uh, but remember is what is your I, what is the value of i? And what I showed you from the beginning is i represents the square root of negative one. Because you can't take the square root of a negative number, and so we're going to have i equals square root of negative one. Now, if I was to square if I was to square both sides, the square root would cancel out, and I'd get i squared equals negative 1. And then if I wanted to find out what i cubed was, well, that would become i times i squared, which would become a negative i. And then if I did i to the fourth, that's essentially i squared times i squared, which would become negative 1 times negative 1, which is a positive 1. So essentially, this is going to become our most important part when trying to determine when we have i to a um, higher exponent than uh, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So the first thing right here, what I need to do is I need to first go ahead and uh, solve this problem. So first thing I look at here, and it says 7i squared times 6i. So the first thing I need to do is square this. So this will become 49i squared times 6i. Now I need to do 49 times 6. And 49 times 6, let's say I don't have a calculator, so I'm going to do the old time method. 6 times 9 is going to be 54. Uh, 6 times 4 is 24, plus 5 is 29. Right? I'm multiplying 6 times my 49. So therefore I get 294. Then i squared times i becomes i cubed. That's a bad i. Let me redo that. So when I go and look up here and I say, what does my i cubed represent? That represents a negative i. So therefore, my answer is still going to have an i in there, but it's going to be a negative. So my final solution is negative 294i. All right. So just multiply your numbers, and then you multiply. Um, your i's, and then all you gotta do is once you're done with them, you figure out what your final value is for your i, and you solve it. Yes? Um, so should we should probably write down that little chart, right? I would probably write down that chart. But if you can also pretty much figure out this chart fairly easy on your own, like I said, if you always remember that i is the square root of negative 1, then if you square it, both sides, well, the square root, the square of the square root, it just becomes negative 1, and then you know you can kind of follow the rest of the chart by yourself. Um, so now, how the heck am I supposed to know what i to the 42nd is going to be? Well, if I say i to the 5th, it's going to follow along again in that pattern. i to the 5th is going to equal negative 1. i to the 6th is going to be a negative 1. i to the 3rd, or i to the 7th, is going to equal negative i. And what I start to notice is this. What they all do is this is when, um, if you had a remainder of 1, this is i squared um, is going to be a remainder of 2. Because look, if I take in a 4, if I subtract 4 from 6, I have a remainder of 2. So therefore, it's going to be i squared. If I subtract 7 minus 4, I get a remainder of 3. So it's going to be i to the cube. or remainder 4, or really technically 0, um, is your i to the 4. So to solve one of these problems, what we're doing is we keep, we're keep on repeating 4 plus another 4 plus another 4. So what I need to do is I need to figure out what is the remainder for this problem. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say 4 goes into 42. 4 goes into 42, obviously 10 times, right? And it has a remainder. Too. Do you guys remember that from my like, what, fourth grade, third grade, second grade, something like that? So now it has 10 remainder 2. So now I know that remainder 2 is negative 1. So my final solution to this one is um, my final answer for this would be negative 1. Because this is really technically I just repeat itself. Does that make sense? Any questions? All right. So that's how you simplify complex numbers via multiplication and, and reducing.